we've had another near miss, an asteroid, NASA says, a large space rock, an asteroid just missed Earth and it came to us much closer than our moon is. This is by Sebastian Ketley on Express UK. NASA shocked us by telling us an asteroid hurtling through space at more than 21,500 miles an hour just shot past the Earth at a fraction of the distance between the Moon and our planet. NASA's asteroid trackers have revealed this. Well, thank goodness they saw it. Unlike the Chelyabinsk meteor, which they didn't see at all. Now, the speedy asteroid dubbed by NASA asteroid 2019 JH7 shot past our Earth early this morning. According to NASA's asteroid tracker systems, the space rock came dangerously close to our Earth at around 1.06 a.m. in the morning or 12.06 noon UTC time. The incredible news comes just two days after NASA first observed the asteroid heading towards us. They first found it, can you imagine, Tuesday, May 14th. I'm astonished. Really, I'm astonished. Can you imagine if this thing was coming at us, skimming us, and we would not even see it? Uh, thank goodness, thank God, it missed us. The Jet Propulsion Laboratory, NASA's JPL in Pasadena, California, said the asteroid flew by on a so-called, quote, Earth Close Approach Trajectory, end quote. At its closest, asteroid JH7 approached our home planet from 0.19 times the distance to the moon. In other words, the barreling space rock came within 44,000 miles of striking the Earth. Uh, this is what you know. This is what the uh, the astronomers were um, warning us of when they finished their. Uh, mock asteroid earth impact drill uh, just last Friday it was a week ago and they failed that they failed uh, it was a desktop exercise but they failed saving the earth from impact now uh, and they came out saying look it's a matter of time it's not uh, if it's when in other words it will happen it's just we don't know when um, NASA said that this is equivalent of 0 0.000048 astronomical units. One AU astronomical unit is the distance between the Sun and Earth, which is 93 million miles. And as we know, this one, as I said, is only, was only 44,000 miles. That's 70, well, just over 71,000 kilometers. Um, that's very close for... Uh, uh, a celestial body to be close to us because you know it'd be uh, because of the gravitational pull towards Earth. One astronomical unit measures the distance Earth to the Sun, approximately 93 million miles. Asteroid JH7 is an Apollo type NEO or near Earth object. NEOs are all comets, and asteroids orbiting the Sun from a maximum distance of 1.3 astronomical units or 120 million miles. Occasionally, NEOs will cut into Earth's own orbit of the Sun and swing by dangerously close to Earth. NASA said, quote, as they orbit the Sun, near-Earth objects can occasionally approach close to Earth. Well, okay, of course. And they said, note that a close passage astronomically can be very far away in human terms, millions or even tens of millions of miles. But this one was only 44,000 miles away. During the asteroid's flyby, NASA said the space rock reached incredible speeds of about 9.64 kilograms per second, or that's 21,564 miles per hour, or 34,407 kilometers per hour. So it's going at 21,500 miles an hour, and it's only 44,000 miles away from us. That means it would take from where it was uh, until it 
it would, if it were to come to us, it would take half an hour to impact us. I am, I'm sitting here shaking my head in disbelief that they only found it two days ago. NASA JPL further estimates that the asteroid measures somewhere in the range of 10.1 foot to 22.6 feet in diameter. Thank goodness it wasn't huge. But it's just about as big as the one that flew over Chelyabinsk uh, in 2013. And that one they didn't even see. At the upper end of the estimate, the asteroid is about as tall as an average giraffe and is just shorter than a London double-decker bus. Okay? Based on asteroid JH7's trajectory, NASA has calculated a number of future flybys between today and when it comes around again in 2077. Oh, whoopee! And what, will they, what have they uh, found? The next close approach will occur, here we go, May 12th, 2020. Well, they found it on May 13th, and it's going to come in um, next year. And then again on May 9th, 2021. After that, the space rock will also shoot past the scorching planet Venus on July 4th, 2020. The last expected flyby is expected to occur on May 10th, 2077. So we have this thing coming by at us next year at the same time, and the year after that at the same time. All I am uh, very grateful for is that it's not bigger than it was, and that means that it didn't have enough, uh, uh, even if, well, okay, God forbid if it did enter, uh, it would have a local, uh, if it had a local impact, would not be at all pleasant. Let's remember the Chelyabinsk destroyed seven thousand buildings. Uh, when it when it went and it did even well, it they it didn't impact the Earth. It just blew up in, in the atmosphere. Um, it was in like an air blast. But uh, this thing is coming around next year, the year after that. And as they said, they cannot see the little ones. They're just trying to figure out which the big ones are, about 460 feet across. This one was about 25 feet across. Um, the, so the big ones are the ones that can impact and uh, wipe out a whole city, like no, New York or whatever, you know, Boston, you know, London, God forbid. So I'll leave links below for you for this on Express UK. I just wanted to remind you that the criteria for the asteroid impact exercise that they had that they finished last Friday was basically the size and timing of the Apophis asteroid which will be coming at us in um, 10 years. And uh, in May, um, Friday, May 13, uh, April 13, Friday, the April the 13th, 2029. And they used a criteria about the same size as this and uh, also the same timing in April of 2027, like two years before the Apophis. And they supposedly nuked it and they broke a, bro a piece broke off and it, it impacted the city of New York somewhere. And that was uh, a disaster, supposedly. And you can imagine nuking an asteroid and coming having the, the radioactive pieces of rock flinging to Earth and also impacting major cities. I mean, that uh, brings out a whole load of other problems. Even lawyers are having a field day with this saying, okay, so now, now the company or the country that has blown up or done something to steer or affect the asteroid and it, that it, and, uh, it ended in disaster means that that country or that company has to pay damages and compensation to the people that have been damaged by the result of this. I guess it's like Admiralty Law, uh, which is also in effect for planes, by the way. In Admiralty, like let's say you have a sinking ship or the ship has crashed and you have a tugboat bringing it into port. Well, the tugboat is responsible for anything that happens to the ship. If it doesn't bring it in properly and the boat starts swaying this way and that and crashing into other nearby boats or ships, it's a tugboat company that has to be held responsible. 
So I'll leave a link below for you for this on Express UK. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.